Hi everybody, this is Dan Stolbarger. Welcome to this week's update. It is the week of June 6th. We'll look back on what's transpired this week, but a reminder, make sure you grab the PDF PowerPoint that accompanies this YouTube presentation. You can get that on our YouTube page or go to our website at holygroundexplorations.com. So I start usually these updates with the as I see it and sort of the question of the day. Uh, first of all, just know this. It's imminent. War in the north is coming. But it's Jerusalem Day. And uh, as we think back upon the miracle of the Six-Day War, when we think back of how uh, Israel in six days, it's amazing when Israel stood alone, and they defeated their enemies, what, six days? And that was like who? Uh, Syria, Jordan, Egypt? And now it's been 243 days? And with, an, with America as their chief ally, and still no victory yet. Um, I wonder why. I wonder why. As I mentioned, make sure you grab the slides. Uh, the next slide is, is, as of yesterday, the fires that were taking place up north due to the bombing from Hezbollah. It's out of control. There's a map here. So it used to be that most of the rockets were falling in Kiryat Shamona or at the northern border within a few miles of that border. But as you can see by these uh, red markings, the strikes now are Sea of Galilee and uh, and Israel will not will not sit back much longer before uh, really all out war. I, I was hesitating even to do this uh, update this afternoon and wait until tomorrow because I felt like it could come at any time. And then with all eyes on Rafa and everything that's taken place, I had to show this slide. Uh, slide number four, you know, one of those so-called peaceful demonstrations, once again, free Palestine, etc. And uh, my slide simply says, any more questions? Do you see the signs that say, kill the hostages now? Not bring them home now, but kill the hostages now. And then the cell phone with the message, they're not coming home. That's the peace partner. I'll leave my comments. Let's jump into our news bite this week. Um, I don't know if you've recently seen Biden, but uh, 80 plus years old. I mean, he can hardly walk across the stage right now. And uh, to think that he's the leader, the commander in chief is horrifying. At least it is for me. But Joe Biden's claim is that somehow his Gaza plan, which he actually said was Israel's plan, but wasn't, that his Gaza plan will bring lasting peace to the region. And let me simply say delusional, much like what he looks like these days when he's facing a camera. Now, Israel says, sad news, Israel believes that more than a third of the hostages are now dead. And so they're not holding out, thinking that there's going to be uh, many that will ever be released. And Senwar just came out today saying, we're not going to release one unless we can maintain who we are and continue to be militarized. That ain't going to happen. So that's where the so-called ceasefire peace process is as of today. And then the American administration, I mentioned the uh, six day war, the American administration in a message to Israel is saying avoid escalation in Lebanon. Again, let me tell you that since October 7th, it, I don't even know if you can wrap your arms around this, but there's been 17,500 rockets or mortars are missiles that have been launched into Israel. Over 5,000 plus of those are from the north, from Hezbollah. How many rockets, mortars, missiles 
would we allow on our northern border if Canada sent one, two, three, five? How many would we allow to come in before we would roll up our sleeves and make sure it never happened again? Or Mexico, take your pick. Okay, the bottom line is I think Israel has two options. Either an all-out war or peaceful so-called diplomatic efforts. Um, bottom line, the diplomatic efforts will never go deep enough. They'll never sustain anything, which makes war between Israel and Hezbollah imminent. So that's our news bites for this week. A couple of our major articles. Again, we're going to talk about the IDF war in Lebanon. Uh, Britain has warned Lebanon that Israel is going to launch a large-scale offensive in mid-June. That's about a week away, right? And then the bottom line, last night, Hezbollah drones struck um, in Israel, killing an IDF soldier, wounding 10 others. They struck a school as well. And President Herzog has basically said the world is simply going to have to wake up. Once again, hopefully the last time I will say it, war is imminent. Um, BB's prior, not BB's, Biden's priorities. Uh, Biden suggested in his address that he delivered last Friday. And by the way, wasn't it timely that he uh, addressed uh, the nation and the world uh, at the time of the Shabbat so that Israel could not respond to what he had to say and then quote Israel's proposal is this and we've already gone over the fact that no no it really wasn't it's yours Joe and we see how the message is playing out with the New York Times Washington Post Associated Press Wall Street Journal and so on and so forth you can read those quotes but the bottom line and this is truth Truth spoken here. Uh, Biden wants BB out, even more than he wants the hostages released. That's the bottom line, and that's what's happening 24-7 right now. How can we get BB out? And by the way, Benny Gantz has made it clear that on June 9th, he's removing himself from the War Council. We'll see if that actually does happen, but again twisting the arm, forcing uh, snap elections or whatever. The whole goal of the Biden administration right now is not to get the captives free, Americans let alone, not to have a ceasefire. It's to get Netanyahu out. And then we have a, a spokesman, senior Hamas spokesman, Osama, nice name, Osama Hamdan, and his comment concerning the ceasefire or the proposal that Biden said was Israeli, he says, we've informed the mediators that we cannot agree with this deal. We will never agree to a, in any deal unless there is a permanent ceasefire and a full withdrawal from the Gaza Strip, along with serious prisoner exchanges. And those serious prisoner exchanges for every one Israeli um, figured out. A hundred, whatever the case may be. Prisoners, 30 of the exchange will be murders, blood on their hands. That's the deal. What a deal. Bibi, why can't you accept that? And then uh, a couple more. Back to this Palestinian statehood, this massive push that's taken place. The G7, that's Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Those are the big dogs, right? They have released a statement. They released it Monday evening that they fully endorse standing behind this comprehensive deal that Biden has laid out on Friday. They see it as a pathway towards peace and will ultimately, the sooner the better for them, result in a two-state solution. Because Hamas is 
uh, dinkering around and has not accepted anything yet. In fact, comes out and, and basically says, we're not going to accept it. The response of the G7, which is interesting to me, they said, this is Hamas's last chance to return the hostages peacefully. This is it. There's no other deal coming. Take it or leave it. And with Hamas saying we're going to leave it, then the G7 has gone on to say, um, now, if that's the case, we will assist Israel's war against Hamas. Well, wait and see about that. Okay, last one, truth spoken here. You can read that on your own. This is, again, uh, from Stand Good Enough, and it's the uh, hypocrisy. It's the insanity. In the Hebrew, the word is balagon. To think that you can strike a peaceful resolution deal with baby killers, butchers, uh, rapists, we can go on and on. No, no. It, it, you know, we think about D-Day, that's today or whatever, and we think it's been, what, 85 years, something like that, and the world brought the hammer on the Nazis, in a sense. And so we've had 85 years of peace. Israel needs to bring the hammer on Hamas so that this is not played over and over and over again, which it has for the last 20 years. So again, last slide here is our upcoming tour to Israel. Join us for the land, the people, and the king, November 7th through the 17th. Uh, I'm not a good promoter. We don't market well. But this is one tour experience you just don't want to miss. Friends in Israel have told us specifically today, at this time, Israel doesn't need visitors. Israel needs friends. And we want to create a deeper experience than just a first-timer's trip. The land will always speak to you. Always. You know, it's the black and white words of your onion skin pages of your Bible coming alive in living color. But the people, we want to make sure that you meet the people of Israel. The people. We want to stand with the people. We want to let the people know that their Messiah loves them. And then the king. Uh, a trip to Israel with no worship is not an experience I want to have. We want to have that experience of worshiping our king in the land where it all began. So that's it for this week. Again, share this with your friends. Um, I'm at the point now where we're doing these once a week, and I'd like to see more and more people get this exposure because today truth is hard to find. And when you find it, Keep it, hold on to it, and share it with others. And I hope this provides some clarity and truth for you all. God bless you, and shalom. And by the way, signing people up for kafir is simple. Go to our website, or, or you know, you can sign up, and they'll get a daily Bible reading schedule. They'll get the weekly Middle East update. They'll get a weekly old-fashioned Bible study, and it's all free. Just sign them up and let's grow this ministry. Okay, that's it. Shalom. Goodbye.